Why, hello there, my fellow Moonlanders. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program 2, Episode 5, Munlander Part 1. Uh, next craft is going to be a Munlander. So here's the raffle timer for the Munlander name. Let me reset eligibility. And I'll talk a little bit about how to design a good Munlander, about the staging and um, the equipment required. So the first thing that we're really building is the lander itself and then the fuel required to return back to Kerbin. So I'm going to do the simple tin can again. The other thing that we're going to want to do is to make sure that the access door does not get blocked because we're going to want to actually get boots on the mud. So then this stage here is going to be as high vac efficient and thrust uh, doesn't matter that much because it's really lightweight craft. We'll put, uh, even though it's not required, we'll put the heat shield in and decoupler. And let me update the priority. Build a Munlander. Little decoupler, and then of course the parachute. So then this here and the things attached to this will be part of the Mun landing itself. So I'm going to do radial uh, decouplers. We'll do threefold symmetry so that the access door isn't blocked. Add larger tanks, and this will help decelerate. This will help um, burn towards Mun and then decelerate for a landing. Because Mun doesn't have atmosphere, so we're going to need to use engines to decelerate and not um, not aerobrake or any you know parachutes or anything like that. You can't parachute on a zero atmo planet. Stick some. All right, and then uh, let's get slightly higher thrust engines on here. We still want to stay with small. So maybe, sw uh, actually, I bet a bunch of terriers would do it. It says my thrust to weight ratio is zero. Uh, that's hard to believe. It's like impossible to believe. Uh, we're also going to want landing gear. So this section here is what's going to land on Mun. Maybe I'll add a little bit more fuel to the middle. Just so that we have fuel to, for our return trip. There we go. And then the landing legs will go with the wombats. We don't need the large landing legs, but we don't want the micro ones either. The really important thing, in my opinion at least, is that your landing legs are lower than your engines, so that you're not landing on your engines. And then your landing legs have a wide uh, base and not narrow, because if you go narrow, you'll tip more easily. So if we go with these micro legs, maybe they, they well, no, these micro legs are okay, but these micro legs are like too small for the craft I'm planning to land. Maybe even the small legs would be acceptable. I'll take a look at them. Yeah, the small legs might be okay. So I'll go six small... Well, wait. It'd be the same. Six small legs or four or three larger legs are actually the same weight. So we'll go the six small legs. The Wallaroos. There's our little landers. Lander legs. Come on. Tracked. Okay, cool. Now, I do want to truss these together so that they're stable. But I don't need winglets or anything because this section is going to be landing on the, the moon, which has no atmosphere. Some 
orbital bodies do have atmosphere. Um, and then you should account for uh, air and resistance and all that. But and and you can also air break if that's the case. But the uh, the Mun doesn't have any atmosphere, so that's not a problem. So there, nice and stable, easy to land. The the more stable you have this section, and I'm gonna add, also add an inline reaction wheel to this as well. But the more stable that you have it, the easier it will be to land to be able to do fine tuned adjustments. So the name of this is going to be the Kellyan. Kellyan Mark 1. Save. So let's add a little inline reaction wheel here. Cool. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have lights when landing as well, so that you can actually see what the hell you're doing when you're trying to land this thing. So we'll add lights, landing lights. To illuminate our landing, because it might be a it might be a dark side of the moon type landing. I'll, I'll attempt not to do that, but you know, it's not always perfect. I'll do like LED strips on the side, just because it's cool. Uh, one other thing that we're going to want is the uh, ladders, right? Telescoping landing ladder so that our intrepid explorer doesn't have to just jetpack his way down. How heavy are these? So I'm going to just do built-in um, fixed ladders all the way down. They're lightweight enough that it's not going to tilt the uh, the, the rocket considerably. And the bottom of these fixed ladders will do one extendo ladder to reach the ground. And then I'll I'll test this on the um I'll test this on the, the launch pad to make sure that you know, maybe I need the medium one. To make sure that it's usable all the way down. Because sometimes ladders get a little weird. So if we have one ladder there and extend. That should extend to the ground. Of course, on a um, on a low gravity moon like Mun, uh, you can use jetpacks just fine. But you know, I, I like the look of the ladders, and why not use them? So let's launch this just to test the ladder functionality. So this is uh, an experiment, a pre-launch experiment. For a lander test. Well, that's a weird angle. What the heck? Uh. Game? Are you drunk? So here's the lander legs. Uh, <laughs> I don't, don't know what's going on with this game here. That, uh. The center of the camera is, um. Crazy? But, alright. Tim. There we go. That's a little bit better. Tim can't climb. Because I don't have a ladder directly underneath. So, uh, that's a perfect... A perfect uh, prototype. Why we needed a prototype and why we needed course correct. Apparently I need a ladder uh, in that section. And I'm not um, I'm not going to update the Kellyan Mark One just yet. That's like a designation when we actually do a launch, because I never intend this to get to the Mun. This is still the design phase. All right, let's see if that ladder works. Why ladders are important is uh, jetpack fuel is limited. I don't think it's going to be all that possible under normal EVA circumstances to like run out of fuel really you do come on wow these individual ladders like don't work you only go one section at a time that's kind of terrible that's not how it used to work 
So these individual micro ladders, like, might... I might not use. Because they don't seem to function the way they used to in KSP. Because you can only climb up one section, and then you have to, like, jump to the next section. I mean, it's... I guess it, I guess it, it does work. Uh, so let's extend the bottom ladder. I have to be in the craft for that and see if we can't get all the way down to the, uh, to the ground without letting go. Come on, go down. There we go. It's working. It's just, it's a little crude. Needs some refining. I might do more extendo ladders. Really? You, uh, okay. Who needs physics? Because extendo ladders are just easy to walk up. But yeah, we, we can descend just fine. With some, with some trouble. The jetpacks the Kerbals have on Kerbin aren't powerful enough to um, to fly with. But when we're on the moon, that won't be the case. Okay. Let's hop back on, and then I'll do the extend more extendo ladders. That will just be a little easier to traverse. It used to be in, in the original Kerbal Space, those fixed ladders, you could just go from one to the other without having to, like, grab them individually, so that it was a smooth motion. And I guess they broke that? Best I could tell. It does still work, but, like, not, not as nice as it used to be. So instead, we'll just have another extendo, but upside down. And that way it should connect the top to the bottom, and, and that should work. Okay, well we tested that section. Uh, so the section under this is going to be um, circularization around Kerbin, and then also some of the transfer section. So you can think of this top section as the deceleration onto the moon and then the blast back to Kerbin. That's what this fuel is for. Um, so underneath this is going to be a slightly beefier section, which is going to include the fuel, the resources in order to circularize around Kerbin and then transfer to the moon. So I'll do a medium engine here. With a medium fuel. Go with another... With the... Poodle engine. Which is a, a low thrust to weight ratio. But this is... Um, we should already kind of be circularized by now. I'll also angle this so that it's... Uh, just looks nicer. Got it. And then... The last section we want is breaking atmosphere of Kerbin and uh, in the start of circularization. I'm also going to introduce, so we have the stack coupler decoupler here, but I also want to add more inline reaction wheels. I probably don't need to worry about too much solar, but I might want to add a little bit of solar panels just in case so that we don't run out of power for our reaction wheels when we're, um, when we're drifting to Kerbin because that uh, that would be bad. So in this top section, let's add two small 
a few small solar panels. Uh, I like the ones that are packed up because they look protected from uh, from flight damage. So one there and one there, and I realize that overlaps my LEDs, so I'll I'll put them up a little bit. Okay, cool. So I have a little bit of solar power. The I'm going to take all the monopropellant, which is for RCS, out of the tin can. Because I don't really use RCS as much as I use uh, reaction wheels. The flight... So the thrust to weight ratio of this uh, poodle is awful. But we should already be in space by the time this poodle's running, so I don't think it's going to be a problem. So then, below this, we're going to want one more phase, and this phase is to break Atmo. So we'll do a medium decoupler. And a medium to large fuel. A large thing of fuel. And then, like, the Mammoth. Plus, um... Plus, uh, the Solid Boosters. Oh, again, over-engineered, but because I'm not paying for it, I'm not gonna fine-tune it so that it's, like, the proper cost. In real career mode. That, unless you're playing on the hardest difficulty, uh, over-engineering is pretty affordable, even in career mode. It's not so punishing that you need to be working for NASA to figure that out. So, the Delta V of this thing is about 10k, which is <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, especially given that it's not asparagus staged. If you guys know what asparagus staging is. So, yeah, this should do just fine. Do they still have fuel lines for the cheapy setup of all liquid engines? Yeah, they do. So if you go to the fuel tanks and scroll all the way down, there's the fuel lines. If you want to do asparagus staging. Asparagus staging... What is this, TBD? Man, that part doesn't even have a name. Asparagus staging, um, according to me, because I've tried to do it a little bit in-game, I find it actually to be a little bit more difficult than it was uh, in Kerbal Space Program 1. To, to set up properly. Uh, it could be that I was doing it wrong, but but uh, I stand by that. That Asparagus Staging was a little bit more of a head-scratcher for this. I, and I what I will do is I'll, I'll try Asparagus Staging something uh, later on in this stream. Hmm. Let's save this. I'm probably going to want to add winglets, some control surfaces to the bottom of the um, the solid boosters. The solid boosters. What are the delta v? The solid boosters. Yeah, the solid boosters are pretty much going to be what breaks Atmo for me. So they're the ones that really need the winglets. And then the other thing I'm going to ask you guys or predict for you guys is: Do you think this makes it to the moon and back? Or will I have to do additional iterations? What do you guys think? There is... There's the prediction. First try. Yep. I'm going with the first try. So let me look it over. Let me check the staging. So we have uh, the solid boosters, solid booster ejections, then the mammoth... Was this the mammoth or mainsail? Was I think this is the mainsail? No, this is the mammoth. Uh, the mammoth engine, and then the cutting the mammoth engine off, and then the poodle engine, and then cutting the poodle engine off, and then the terriers cutting the terrier engine off. Uh, I do need another phase, though. I need the parachute up top, and then the ejection of for re-entry above that as well. So fix the staging. Staging is almost always requires fixing before you launch. 
Um, in terms of stability, it looks pretty good. In terms of Delta V, it's ridiculous. It's 12K. Holy moly. How is that even... How is that true? That's a lot of Delta V. Uh, Delta V minimum from Kerbin to Mun is... Let me look it up. Is a little less than 5K. For... So, takeoff from Kerbin to orbit and then to Mun and return is 7k all of it so like Mun and back is like a 7k just sh uh, just around 7k requirement so over engineered to the nines um in terms of fuel but whether it actually works i mean that is that is to be determined uh, the individual delta v of the individual phases looks good too. So I think I think we have the fuel, so it's really just a matter of stability. Uh. Yeah, asparagus staging is a little bit more cheating in Kerbal Space Program than real life, because in real life, you don't want to move fuel around if you can help it, because fuel lines would explode and it's hard to pump fuel, and pumps require weight and all that. Whereas in Kerbal Space Program, the fuel lines work perfectly, don't fail, don't require weight or anything. So asparagus staging in Kerbal Space Program, and I should explain that, and I'll explain that in a second, but asparagus staging in Kerbal Space Program isn't realistic, because in real life, you wouldn't build that way, because it's so much more complicated and dangerous and explosive. But what asparagus staging is, is imagine you a revolver. A revolver has like six chambers, right? Um, now imagine that revolver with the six chambers, and I know I only have five fingers, but each one has a rocket and fuel. And what you do is you have the fuel, you have all of all six of your rockets, and it could be any number, but I'm just going to use six. All six of your rockets drawing from the one fuel tank or two fuel tanks that are opposite one another. And then when those fuel tanks are, are empty, you drop those tanks and those two rockets, and then you're down to four. And then you have all four draw off two fuel tanks, and then you drop those two, and then you're down to two. And what that allows you to do is to have a lot more fuel-to-thrust ratio where you're you're constantly shedding weight, and you're, um, it, it just allows for a much higher uh, efficiency than the rockets that we build today uh, with current technology. So it's a way to, to stretch your, your fuel and your thrust considerably. Um, all right, so the predictions are in. Let's try to launch. Launching on Launchpad 2. The other thing is uh, for us to do a transfer to the moon. Technically, there is a... Well, okay, I might need to save and load because this whole camera thing is crazy. But um, there is a right time to launch to the moon because it has to be in the right orbit around Kerbin for us to get there. Now, there's a way around that, which is just to launch to uh, low Earth or low Kerbin orbit around Kerbin, and then to orbit Kerbin until you're in the right transfer window. Um, I could do it either way. The camera bug needs to repad. So let's save... Yoda 1. And load. Yoda 1. And I think what I'll try to do is I'll wait until the moon is in the right phase, in the right position, for us to go there without having to do a pre-orbit. Give me launch pad. We'll go off launch pad one. No, it's still going crazy. Going 
Go all the way up to the menu. Right, buddy? If only I had a dog named Laika. Well, we, we would just send Laika up. Go to the solar map and come back and it will resolve. All right, I'll try that. You, when you mean solar map, you mean like tracking? Go out to tracking and then come back? I haven't found all the workarounds for these bugs. Does Kerbin have a tilted axis of rotation? Relative to the orbital plane? Uh, no. No, it doesn't. Oh, Paige, not you again. I thought I was done with you. Alright, out to the tracking station. Oh god, I really should have disabled Paige. And then, back to the rocket. Hey, it worked, thank you. Okay. Going. My Delta V considerably just changed, but that's fine. It's still above the 7k required. Especially if I have an efficient launch. Big if. Big, big, big if. So where it's east is to the right, which would be D. So if I'm trying to gravity turn, D is the key. And stable so far. Yeah, bud. We're going to the moon. Now, for all of you that think I'm going to make it first try, I am going to feather the controls as best as I can. The tip-top set... Okay, uh... So those that said yes are probably biting their nails now. You see the, uh... The lander module... Uh... Wacky, waving, flailing tube men style? Do I have struts? I do have struts, but not to the top section. I'm just going to full send it. There's no way this thing is going to survive, though. Because it's... Yeah, no, it might. But it's really hard to control because of the wobble. <laughs> wobble, wobble, wobble. I have not given up. Because of all the physics calculations, time also slows down a little bit. It also looks as if my uh, solid engines don't have fuel, so I don't know what kind of Delta V I'm going to get off of them. Oh, you know what? It's because... Oh, hold on, I screwed up. I have to revert to launch. I forgot to... Um, to... Uh, disable infinite fuel from when we had that, like, jeb incident getting jettisoned out to nowhere. Infinite fuel was still on, and, um, and, yeah, that screws up the, the, the launch considerably. So, I'm not gonna fix it, uh, because I'm still gonna let the prediction ride, but I need to fix the infinite fuel. So, infinite fuel is off. Yeah, I forgot about that. There we go. Now I'm actually using fuel. And I'll, I'll wait a little bit longer to lean the rocket. Because I know the top section is... Uh, it's a little loose. Just a little loose. It still wobbles anyway. I haven't touched anything yet. Oh, kumbaya. <laughs> I 
because the the control point is in the top section, that's why the nav ball is going wackadoo. It's probably a pretty good ride for Tim. Tim's like, this is cool, man. He doesn't seem to understand the mortal danger that he's currently in. Oh, too much tilt. Oh, subway play. Congratulations. You missed the beginning because your daughter was born today? You know, I I think uh I think that's more than understandable. I didn't wait for the phase of the moon though. And given that the moon's over there, the moon's in the wrong position for me to do a direct transfer. So we're going for orbit. App is about 30k. I'm a little worried that the these solid boosters aren't going to get me up high enough because of the a little bit partially because of the wobble of the front is like hurting my fuel efficiency I think and also because the next stage well the next stage is still the mammoth stage so I'll, I'll attempt it don't worry those that think that I was going to make it first try I am still going to try I'm not going to revert early yeah these solid boosters almost have me up to space though getting pretty close You can do it. Oh, there I am up to space now. So I'll start the circularization. Tilt. Get rid of them. Turn on the, uh, the mammoth engine just to get away from the, uh, the dangerous collisions. And a circularization maneuver. It doesn't have to be a pretty circularization because it's, it's not, uh, we're not sitting in that orbit. It's just a pre-transfer. Little solar panel action? Oh yeah. Let's test the landing gears. Yep, landing gears work. Whoa, Jesus. They work, but they uh they kind of bounced things in a scary way. I'm almost in space now. And we're in space. All right, Tim. Don't end up like Timma. You got to survive this. My reputation's at stake. So the required Delta V for the circularization is only about 500. How close am I to the Apple app? Uh, not that close. I should wait. I'm just doing a, a little burn so that I can uh, point at the maneuver node. And fast forward to the maneuver now. Game looks good. It really does. And the next time I stream this, I might be streaming on a new computer. Um, meaning that it will run better. My computer is now three and a half, 
pushing four years old. And a lot of the parts are kind of uh, need to either be replaced or uh, or planned obsolescence. All right, Tim, you ready for the transfer or the uh, orbit burn? Here we go. Look at that plume. Looks real nice. Now, one thing I found that I'll say again. Oh, you know, it does designate that I looks like I've orbited. But um, one thing that I'll note is a lot of the times the maneuver burns are weird. But my app apps and my peri apps are look correct. They look fine. So the next thing is the tr uh, the transfer to the mud. So we have a slight inclination here. So what this is, this negative two percent or two degrees, positive two degrees, is that the plane that we're on is two degrees tilted to the plane of the moon. It's not a big enough tilt that it's going to affect us, I don't think. Uh, so we're going to create a maneuver, a transfer maneuver to get all the way out there. And I'm going to try to set it up with the... with um, a really close intercept so that it's easier to land. Like an equatorial intercept. Something like that. That looks pretty good. Actually, that looks a little fuel boosted. Let me try to correct that. That looked, uh... Not, oh, there we go. <laughs> On a collision course with the moon. Well, uh, ride or die, right? Alright, there we go. That's a really good intercept there. Where we're in the sphere of influence for a long time. First impressions? First impressions is, um... The graphics are a lot better. Um, the tutorials are are uh, top notch. Some of the game mechanics aren't as sharp as the original, like maneuver nodes and building could be a little bit cleaner. But um, overall, a huge improvement in terms of graphics. And then when the new content comes out, it's going to far surpass the original, in my opinion. Provided that they live up to their promises of like interstellar travel and colonies and multiplayer. I mean, boom, right? Mind blown. That will be amazing. But it's very playable. I think a lot of the um, the review bombing that it received uh, is review bombing as a result of people expecting it to be greater than Kerbal Space 1 at release, which is, in my opinion, pretty unrealistic because they didn't promise that. So it got uh, pretty heavily review bombed for that, which is silly in my opinion. Man, I am um, I'm tipping and I can't control anymore. The tip. All right, so we're starting the burn. I'm trying to correct to point to maneuver node. We're a little off of maneuver node, so I might need to do some course correction. Wait, why am I burning? The maneuver node says it's here, but it's pro it's uh, retrograde. I might have screwed up the maneuver, or the maneuver might have calculated wrong. Yeah, I can't tell. Because right now, I think this is anti-maneuver. What the hell, dude? What the hell, pilot? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. For whatever reason, uh. I said to... I, I might have screwed that up myself. But we uh, we put us on a crash course for Kerbin, so let's fix that. I think I have the spare fuel to fix it. The TLDR is that um, I was not careful about what node I was pointing at, and uh, I was pointing at the anti-maneuver node, and no, I don't have the fuel in this stage. Maybe I have the fuel in the next stage.
I hope I have the time to fix it. All right, so we're off. Trying to course correct from my mistake. Because I deorbited. I burnt retrograde and, and actually killed the orbit. So now I have to... I have a lot of fuel. But basically I have to uh, re-circularize the orbit before transferring. Because of being a derp. So I'll create another maneuver here. Tusks having nightmares. Moon, where are you? I love little doggy nightmares. They're so cute. I mean, not that they're having nightmares, but they like talk in their sleep. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do right now is just to recircularize this thing, because I screwed it up, and then to do a new transfer. I over engineered this craft to the point where, like, I can afford that, so whatever. That's what I'll do. Am I going with AMD again? I am, yeah. NVIDIA and AMD. I'm just going for benchmarks. I don't I have no brand loyalty. All right, so once the periapsis is at least above 70k, then I'll uh, set up the transfer window. The um the inclination got all screwed up cuz the the bad maneuver that I fired up. Um So I might need to fix the plane inclination. It was at 2% or two degrees, and now it's at six and a half degrees, which is uh, considerably worse. But it does help because one of the things is if you want to go to like Minmus or most other orbital bodies, you have to fix the uh, the degree inclinations anyway. So here's one way to do it: click on this line and create a maneuver node. And just um, course correct until the planes align. This has me aligning within one degree, and that's fine. It's more fuel that I shouldn't have had to burn, but I have to burn due to my sloppiness and stubbornness of not reverting so that you yaysayers thinking that I will make it in first shot uh, might win. Channel points. Let's point towards maneuver and see if I can't fix the plane inclination and then do the transfer. I still have plenty of fuel. Because again, I over-engineered this thing like crazy. So here is the plane correction burn. Kind of hard to tell what's going on. But just fixing the uh, the tilt. You're assuming I was waiting for the X3D chips then? Yes. Yes, I was. They're out in what, three days? I, I punish my computers a lot, given that I'm a streamer with that do, does a lot of video rendering. So I put my computer under full load constantly. So the more powerful it is, the less the heat will affect it. And I like to have powerful chips and not overclock them and properly uh, cool them so that uh, so that my computer doesn't burn out. 
So here's the here's the inclination. It's uh, three degrees and dropping. And I think once we get around one degree, that's probably fine. Even two degrees would be acceptable. We're not going to miss the moon by a two degree. At 1.3. Looking pretty good. It's getting fixed. I'll be cutting the engines right now is about as good as I can get it. Point eight. All right. Next up is the new transfer. The second transfer. This is what happens when you're bad at science. And that looks pretty good. And that requires about 800 Delta V. And I don't even intend for this phase to even land on the moon, so 800 Delta V is no problem. Okay, so there's a nice transfer there. Ex time accelerating to the... Uh, to it. Uh, water cooling? Yeah, the GPU will be air-cooled, the CPU will be water-cooled. That's typically how I like it, because the AIO built-in water coolers for GPUs. Um, AIO water coolers typically fail unless they're custom loop and I don't want to build a custom loop. They typically fail uh, every like once every like two years or whatever. Um, so you can replace CPU water coolers relatively easily and inexpensively, but you can't, it's much more difficult to replace GPU water coolers. You basically just have to buy a whole new GPU and that's insanely expensive. So I usually go water cool CPU, air cool GPU. Just cause it's easier. Most bang for your buck in my opinion. Again, I'm not a hardware guy so much, so. That's a discussion best left to pro true professionals, not myself. All right, we're doing the transfer burn. Burn is on. This is what it looks like. Let's do a little bit of light test. So those are the landing lights. They're not too bright. They should be okay. Uh, we already did the gear test and the uh, solar panels already deployed. Wow. It projects that we're literally on a collision course. Spicy. I like it. And this is a three minute burn. Um, I think I just quick saved. How's the game so far? Uh, you know, I, I really like it. I like the changes that they made. I like the uh, the tutorials, the voice acting, the sounds, the music. There's a lot of improvements over the original. Um, there's still some bugs, of course. It is early access. I, I, oh, I wouldn't expect it to be perfect the day of. I never expect that of really any game. I could probably combine these two. Well, no, I'll keep them separate for return trip efficiencies. Thank you for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program 2, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 25th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream of mine. Farewell, my fellow Kerbonauts, 